This video will follow the experimental setup section of the 630MA user guide. We're going to do a brief example experiment including dissection and mounting, the automated 630MA normalization, a wake-up protocol, and then agonist constriction and relaxation. We will be using a mouse mesenteric artery. The mesentery is a good tissue bed to practice with as there are many vessels to try and pick from and they are easy to isolate and clean. We have the mesentery pinned out and the artery and the vein are oriented north and south. Start by cutting away the connective tissue on the sides of the artery and the vein. We need to remove all of the connective tissue so we can see which vessel is the artery and which is the vein. To begin this process, you will grab the connective tissue itself, never the artery or the vein. Pull the connective tissue to the side and cut close to the vessels. You must try to avoid nicking the vessels with your scissors throughout this process. Continue to carefully remove the connective tissue from the vessels. Remember, you should only grab the connective tissue itself, never the vessels. If you are too rough with the vessels during the dissection, they will not function properly during the experiment. When it comes time to isolate the artery from the vein, you will need to compare the two. The artery will have thicker walls and will appear more white. The vein will have thin walls and appear darker or more red. In this case, the vessel on the right is the artery. You can usually tell best under high magnification. Once you determine which vessel is the artery, you can cut away the vein. You can then continue cleaning the artery under high magnification, trying to remove as much connective tissue as possible. Once you have cleaned all along the vessel, you can then cut both ends and move your segment to a ruler in your dissection dish. The ruler will help you cut your segments into two millimeter lengths or help you better estimate its length, which is important during the normalization. To begin mounting, you should place a piece of wire between your two jaws. Clamp the wire in place by using the micrometer to hold the wire in place. You should secure one end of the wire under the screw. It does not matter which side you secure first. Grab your vessel segment from your ruler and move it to the 630 MA chamber. You should try to grab it only near the end of the vessel. Place the vessel near the free tip of the wire that is between your jaws. Focus your view on the tip of the wire and bring the vessel into focus. Now as carefully as possible and only grabbing near the tip of the vessel, move the vessel onto the wire. Make sure the vessel is fully on the wire before letting go. The back end of your vessel may have been clamped shut when you cut it with your dissection scissors. Be careful not to pull too hard when getting it onto the wire. You can then move the vessel to the jaws. Now move the jaws apart so you can put your vessel in the gap between the jaws. You should now pull the free end of the wire around the screw and tighten it in a clockwise manner. You should always wrap the wire around the screws clockwise. That way when you tighten the screw it will pull on the wire. If you have it the other way, you will actually add a small amount of slack onto your wire. Once you have your first wire secured, you can now grab a second segment of wire. Grab the wire a few millimeters from the tip. You will also want to add a small bend on the back side of the wire. This way it will not hit the sides of the chamber as you try to place it through your vessel. Orient the chamber so your wrist and your hand feel comfortable when adding the second wire. You need to try to avoid poking the inside of the vessel with your wire. This could damage the endothelial cells and affect the function during your experiments. When adding the second wire, you need to make sure that you get the wire all the way through before letting go. Never let loose of the wire while it is inside your vessel. Either remove it or make sure it's all the way through. 
You should then pull the wire so it has equal distance on both sides of the vessel. Do not add too big of a bend in your wire as you will have to pull this through your vessel. Now close the jaws and secure the first side around one of the screws. Add a small gap between the jaws. That way you can grab the back half of the wire and eliminate any slack. You can move the jaws a little to let the vessel fall in place. You should use your forceps to lightly press down the wire on all four corners. This will ensure that your wires are at the same height all the way around. The final position should be where the wires are almost touching. After you mount in as many chambers as you'll be using for that day, you can then turn on heat. As soon as you turn on heat, you should make sure that your chambers are bubbling with your gas mixture. It is a good idea to give a washout as soon as you are ready to start your experiment. You should then give your vessels 20 minutes to reach the correct temperature before using the normalization. In order to utilize the 630MA's automated normalization, you will need to do setup in the 630's menus. Go to Normalization Setup and select the chamber that you will be using. We will keep a normalization time of 60 seconds. This will average the reading over 60 seconds. This will also be where you are setting your wire or your pin diameter. We will be using 40 micron wire. We'll go to next menu. Now this will be information dependent on your vessel specifically. The normalization pressure for the mouse mesenteric artery is 13.3 kilopascals. We will be using a normalization factor of 1.0 and we will be changing the eyepiece calibration to 1. We will do the same thing for the second channel, which also has a mouse mesenteric artery loaded. When you are ready to begin your normalization, you will first need to zero the channel that you will be normalizing. Then go into the settings menu and mounting artery. Select the channel you will be normalizing and you will need to move the jaws together and then press reset. You can now go to the artery parameters and this is where you will enter information about your specific vessel that day. Our first eyepiece endpoint will be zero. Our second point will be the length of our tissue. In this case, it was 1.5. We are going to use a normalization force of 1.0. The steps in the automated normalization will depend on your normalization force. A smaller normalization force will result in more steps. A higher force will result in fewer steps. We are now ready to begin the automated normalization on channel one. Press start normalization. It will first take a baseline reading after 60 seconds, and then it will proceed with its next step. You will notice that the force went up by 1.0 millinewtons and once it hit that point, it started to take a new reading. The force will drop, which is expected. That is why it will take many steps to complete the normalization. Once the force reaches the calculated target pressure line, the normalization will complete and it will automatically set your tissue to the correct normalized force. Once the normalization completes, you will see a screen with various parameters about that particular channel's normalization. You can exit out of this, and now we will zero channel two, 
and we will go into the mounting artery setup for channel two. We will press together and now reset. We can go into artery parameter and set the length of this tissue. In this case, this vessel was 1.8. We will again be using a normalization force of 1.0 and we can start the normalization. Channel 2 has now reached its target pressure and the normalization has completed. So we can exit out of this, back to our home screen, and we will do one more washout, wait for 20 minutes, and then we will start our wake up protocol. After our normalization and washout, we can then zero our chambers and start our wake-up protocol. We will start by adding high potassium PSS for an easy contraction. After three minutes, we will now do washouts on both chambers. After the KPSS, you will do three washes with regular PSS. Now we will do our second exposure to KPSS as part of the wake-up protocol. Twenty minutes after our last washout, we will now add phenylephrine for an agonist constriction. After you've reached a nice plateau with your phenylephrine, you can then add acetylcholine for a relaxation. After the agonist relaxation, we are now going to conclude this abbreviated experiment. For more detailed information about the system, please refer to the 630MA user manual or additional resource videos which can be found on the DMT website.